stop whatever you're doing because there is a viral math problem. And apparently math Twitter is being torn apart, at least in Canada it is. So I'm here as a math professor, as someone with a PhD in mathematics, to try and solve the beautiful puzzle of <sighs> 6 divided by 2 parentheses 1 plus 2. Why am I here? I've seen this exact problem actually go viral multiple times. <laughs> this guy has 15 million views on his video about it. Why? And so I'm going to finally explain what is all the controversy about, and maybe more importantly, like what does it say about our societal views of mathematics? So here's the issue. We have some arithmetic that we need to do, and most of us have memorized some sort of order of operations, like bed mass, or perhaps you've seen PEMDAS as well, which is the same basic idea, but it puts parentheses first and it swaps the order of multiplication and division, which never mattered anyways because multiplication and division are thought of as in the same basic category, and you do those read left to right, and likewise for addition and subtraction, the same category, when you're confronted with those, do those left to right as well. And there's other versions of these. Baud mass, for example, is common in the UK and India and other countries. It doesn't matter. There's some order of operations. And basically, nobody has any disagreement about the 1 plus 2 part. You always do brackets first. You do parentheses first. So the first part of it is pretty straightforward. It's 6 divided by 2 parentheses 3. Everyone agrees with that. But this is where there's a bit of a disagreement. And there's actually two different arguments that are presented at this point. The first says, this can be interpreted as... 6 divided by 2 sort of thought of as together in brackets and then multiplied by 3. And if you do this, well, 6 divided by 2 is just going to be 3, so 3 times 3 is then 9, the final answer is 9. Proponents of this argument say that you go from left to right anytime you have things of the same basic level, like in this case division and multiplication. And so even if you didn't have brackets here, that you would be doing the 6 divided by 2 first because it's on the left, and then you'd be multiplying by the 3. The second argument interprets there being an implicit bracket in a different spot. It says you do 6 divided by 2 times 3, where the 2 times 3 is in brackets. So you do 2 times 3 to get to 6, it's 6 divided by 6, and you get the final value of 1. Proponents of this argument might say that there was an implicit bracket on this side. Because you had a 2 right beside a 3, the implication is that those are supposed to be multiplied, that, that implicitly there's a bracket over here. I indeed, the actual numbers don't matter. The confusion is all about how do you interpret a divided by b times c here, where b and c are juxtaposed together. The choice of division symbol doesn't really matter. You could write, say, 1 divided by 2x squared to give an example, where you're using a slash as your division symbol. The question just is, are you treating that right-hand side that has these two symbols juxtaposed together implicitly as in brackets or not? So is this one half multiplied by x squared? Or is this one divided by two x squared? If you don't want to use brackets, you can always use this trick, which is that you write your division with something on the top and something on the bottom. You use that spatial relationship to convey what is on the top and what is on the bottom. So do you mean a divided by b and then multiplied by c? Or do you mean a divided by the combination b times c. That's the ambiguity. So here's the big moment then. What's the right answer? What do I think as a mathematician? Well, I just do not care. I really do not care which interpretation of these you choose. In fact, I really dislike that this is a viral math problem. The whole point of using symbols in mathematics is so that I can communicate with you, that a complex, complicated idea, I can convey it in a clear and unambiguous way. And if I'm not doing that, if I've written something down that leads to a viral math problem controversy trending, then what that means is that I am using a bad choice of symbols. I could use brackets to immediately eliminate the ambiguity in this problem. I could use the vertical orientation of A on the top and B on the bottom to immediately eliminate the ambiguity in the problem. And so it's always on us, as mathematicians, as people who use math in society, to be unambiguous about what we're trying to present. And, and if there is an ambiguity, then we just tell people what it was that we meant by putting in the brackets or putting in the vertical relationship between these different symbols. And I really think that this shares some larger challenges with the way that society thinks of and conceptualizes mathematics. Often mathematics is thought of as this list of arbitrary rules that you have to just go and memorize and apply. It doesn't matter where the rules came from, it doesn't matter if there's intuition, it doesn't matter if there's mathematical inquiry or reasoning going on behind them. Memorize this list of rules and apply it. 
the spirit of mathematics is about inquiry. It's about creativity. It's about seeing patterns and getting your hands dirty as you play around with mathematics. There's so much beautiful mathematics that's accessible to a very wide audience where you don't need to be some wonderful expert who's had years of training to appreciate the beauty of mathematics and to engage in mathematics yourself. And so the more that controversies like this are a representation of societal view of what mathematics is, the more I, as a math professor, want to make a video like this pushing back. So really I'm making this video not because I care about the actual underlying controversy or have any horse in that particular race, but because I really want to convey this message of thinking a little bit more broadly about what is interesting in mathematics. And so I'll just leave a link to a couple of videos of my own that perhaps indicate some beautiful mathematics. Feel free to check those out if you so wish. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of silly video, kind of out of character video for me on this channel. But do please give it a like for the YouTube algorithm and we're gonna get back to some more interesting mathematics in the next video.